Hi, I'm Orlando Jones here once again with Mark Schnedeker of Entertainment Weekly, and we are here to break down American Gods Episode 7, Prayer for Mad Sweeney. Now here's your 10 second spoiler warning. This is a spoiler alert. We are about to talk about this episode so in depth. If you haven't seen it yet, you do not want to be here. The following program. Modern style. To help us get to the meat of it all, we are joined for the first time by screen-stealing Pablo Schreiber, who plays the largest leprechaun you have ever seen, Matt Sweeney, along with the amazing Emily Browning, who you've previously known as Laura Moon, but now you also know as Essie Tregowan. And back, once again, our executive producers, Brian Fuller and Michael Green. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. hello. Everybody, thank you guys so much for being here for episode seven. Um, so I feel like there's so much to unpack. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, let me let me first start, I guess, with Pablo, Mad Sweeney. We know why he's why he's mad, I suppose. Why uh, we know a little bit more about Sweeney. What do you think is the most important thing we learned about Sweeney in this episode? Um, God, do we know why he's mad? I think we have many more reasons <laughs> to learn about why he's mad. <laughs> One of several. Um, yeah. So we've we've unpacked some chips on his shoulder. I think the most important thing we learned about Mad Sweeney was really the reveal about. Mm. Um, the tie-in to this one here. So he's been carrying this huge piece of guilt around that he was initially put to the task of killing her so that um, Shadow Moon would be at his lowest so that he would take on work from Mr. Wednesday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did both of you guys react when you found this out about your characters? I'm trying to remember when I think we, we found it out. Early. We found it out early. Yeah, we, yeah. We both it was knew like <gasps> you know that kind of the same way other people <laughs> were. I mean, I don't. I feel like having watched all of the episodes in order, I don't feel like it's something that is hinted at really. Well, I'll I feel say, like it's we, a pretty we, big shock. We had a discussion with Pablo about that, and it actually factored into his performance in the first episode mm. when he's looking at what Shadow's about to do, joining up with this man, Mr. Wednesday, and looking at him like, don't fucking do it. Right. Yeah. And there's there's some guilt there. And, uh, yeah, it does also, explain that choice. kind of guilty. And it's also yeah. why he, I remember we were having the conversation, Pablo, yep. on set, because Matt Sweeney wants to get the shit kicked out of him in this yep. moment because <laughs> he feels that ha he has it coming. So he wants Shadow to beat the crap out of him because that's what he deserves. Is this your old lady's obituary? She was a fine lady. So there, like, there's, there's teary-eyed moments where he's just asking to be punched because he deserves it. And it, and it really colors and affects the entire relationship between these two for every episode that's come before this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so without, without that secret that we just learned in this episode, it Which can- Which secret? <laughs> the secret that I killed her. <laughs> um, it can easily become this antagonistic relationship between these two people who just hate each other and are just screaming at each other. And, and mm -hmm. without the depth of that guilt that he's feeling that, that, that uh, colors the reason why he has so much feeling for her and wants to right this wrong that he did. Well, That's yeah, I mean, it's the, also the like the it's the only explanation for why he would put the coin back in her chest. Like, I think if he hadn't have killed her in the first place, he would have just been like, good riddance. Like, you know, he probably would have just left her there because she's not, hasn't been particularly friendly to him. And there's another, no, she, no, she hasn't, which some people yeah. really like. Some people are into that. I'm into it. Maybe he's into, yeah. you know, Oh, I see what clearly you mean. he's yeah, into torture. Well, you like, you know, to be slapped or punched. We know from your first scene with Shadow Moon. That's you true. Slap she can him, do that. So that's, true. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. One of my favorite moments between the two of you, the, the mirror of it, is the moment when you were in the car together and you say, oh, you were a king once. Mm -hmm. There's just, there's such depth in that moment, but I also, I always think of it in conjunction with when you're both in jail telling stories and having, mm -hmm. you know, seen you be the storyteller and having someone fall in love with you and then see you be the storyteller. It's really wonderful between you. How did you guys work out that chemistry? You're on the other side of a wall. It really feels like the two of you are connected in that scene. I think for me it was, I mean, originally I wasn't going to play Essie, like we were, I was waiting for Essie to be cast. I was like, I can't wait wow. to see who's gonna play Essie. Mm -hmm. And then Brian was like, let's talk about Essie. I was like, you want me to play her? Okay, I'll do it. Even though I was <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get a word yeah, out. Yeah, he didn't even get it out. I mean, cause I'd thought about it and I was like, oh, I have a feeling they're gonna ask me cause that would make so much sense. Mm -hmm. And I'm so tired and I really <laughs> wanna go home. <laughs> but, but I can't not do it. I just know that if I like, if I say no to doing it, 
because I want to go home and have a nap. Right. I'm going to like watch episode seven in a few months from now and just be like, Damn it, so. I'm so glad you did, it's so well, me I, too. Now it makes so much sense. Yeah. I yeah. mean, initially I was like, I want her to look so different because I want people to not, maybe not immediately be sure that it's the same person, but mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, of course it has to be the same person. Absolutely. Right, yeah. it's mm -hmm. like. It, it has to be the same yeah. person. Yeah. It, it, it was makes... really one of the things in that happened in the middle of the season that like clarified the whole thing for me. Like when yeah. I heard the news that she was gonna play Essie, I was so happy because it immediately put an entirely new spin on the whole relationship mm -hmm. between the two mm -hmm. people and made the, the relationship and the journey they have through the first season so much deeper and so much richer and, and just by the fact of her playing the character. What was the genesis of your decision to, um, one, to, to have Emily, Emily play Essie, but two, um, to blow it out and make it such a significant kind of arc uh, that we haven't seen yet so far in the season. We, we loved the story in the book and... Yeah. We didn't want to cut it down. Yeah, it needed to be told large and the way to give it import was to weave it into our present day story and the thought of Emily playing it just justified every instinct we had there. Uh, we wanted to tie it a bit more closely to the Mad Sweeney story and his lore, uh, which got a great response from Neil. He said, well then we'll have to change her last name mm. because tr this is the, the one syllable difference that uh, hopefully the internet will not blow up too badly. <laughs> um, Tregowan uh, put her in a, in a where was that? Cornwall. Was Cornwall. Yeah. Whereas that was we, partially me as well because I said I I yeah. can try and do an Irish accent for you. I cannot do a Cornwall. A I don't Cornish think anyone accent. can do a Cornwall. Accent. No, it's <laughs> like um, I worked in Cornwall once, and the only thing I could say it's like he's three or short of a boat. He is it's like <laughs> that kind of. Can you do a little bit of the episode in your voice now? <laughs> just now? <laughs> it's real. Yeah, right? Give, give me the, like, like her that. name was Susan no, Speech, but from Cornwall. <laughs> no, this is exactly why she oh needed to be God. Irish, because it's, you can't Well, not to mention like a... you don't have Cornish leprechauns. Yeah, yeah. well, exactly. There That's what, that. yeah. So, uh, uh, Neil actually asked, said, well, I've changed your name. We're like, but but we love your book. Can we just keep it? And he said, well, how's McGowan? We said, that, that's fine. Close yeah. enough. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> which, uh, which makeup challenge was harder for you? Like, Laura at her deadest or, or Essie? Makeup was never, well, actually, no, L Laura, when, when I had the full chest piece on, um, yeah, like four hours in the chair, but also kind of good because I remember, like, my dad, every time I have a, a new film or something coming out, he's like, am I allowed to watch this one? Because, you know, I have a, I tend to get naked a lot, and he's like, I don't want to see it, so you let me know. I'm like, well, but my dad loves the book, so I was like, well, here's the thing about the prosthetics you will see my boobs, but they're not actually my boobs. So it like makes it kind of okay. Like when you see me naked on TV, it's not really me. It's like all prosthetic. The makeup for Essie was just like, that was so much fun. It was a dream. And it didn't take, it, like the freckles and the wig didn't take too long, but it was the, I think we've spoken a lot about Sudarat, who's our costume designer, who's mm -hmm. unbelievable. And she made all of those costumes like 100%, mm -hmm. like, Authentic. right down to the period, yeah. like totally authentic. Mm -hmm. And so everyone was like, can we have some easy, like can they maybe have a Velcro strap here? She was like, no, absolutely not. This is a full <laughs> corset. And it was amazing, but it was also like pain. pain. <laughs> she day. built the like, underwear. Really I mean, it was down to the buttons, down to, to every everything. stitch. Everything, like oh, it, it took me 30 minutes to get dressed wow. every day, like roped into that corset, which is yeah. great. Cause it actually, it affects your, your performance mm -hmm. as well. Like I think, Laura's the kind of character that like pushes all of her emotions down and I wanted a distinction between her and Essie and the thing about the corset is it's like your emotions are all going to be up here mm -hmm. because there's there's no room here it's just like all sucked in so it was kind of it was kind of cool it helped you me get into it. that. You can see it even the way you talk everything is coming from totally. forward it's so different than Laura it's one of the first yeah. things I noticed I was like this is oh, so wonderful good. because it mm. shifts the performance in such a subtle but beautiful way. Yeah. And there was a, a big distinction that you hit on very early on in the process, which was the difference between Laura and Essie is Essie has belief, Laura doesn't. Totally. And that was yeah. something that you like zeroed in on to differentiate these two women and, mm -hmm. and very effectively. Yeah, and I think that comes from me always, I've always been kind of envious of people who've grown up with religion in a, in a weird way, even if they're not connected to religion anymore. There's this, my ex-boyfriend was Catholic and he was not like, not a Catholic when I knew him, but there's this sense of like, everything's gonna be okay. 
Like even if I'm not thinking about the details of my faith and I'm not really imagining a dude up in the sky, it's like when you have that kind of faith, there's this sense of like, I'll be all right. It's yeah. going to be fine. And Laura doesn't have that at all. And I think that's, I mean, Laura and Essie are really similar in a lot of ways, but the reason that Essie is like happy and kind of, you know, she's kind of this like more bubbling kind of personality is because she, there's this little sense in her of like, I have my, I have my God. Everything's going to be okay. Sure. Well, that just about wraps up things. Mark and I would like to thank Emily Browning, Pablo Schreiber, Brian Fuller, and Michael Green for taking part in our discussion. We'll be here next week to chat about the season finale. Come to Jesus with a roster of guests that you won't believe. <laughs> we will see you then.